Boom! Shake the room, Fire Nation. JLD here, and welcome to Entrepreneurs on Fire, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network with great shows like Business Infrastructure. Today, we'll be focusing on how to build a customer lifecycle. To drop these value bombs, I brought Samo Meta into EO Fire Studios. Samo leads Square's Square Point of Sale and CRM business units. His responsibilities include overall ownership and organizational management across multiple functional disciplines, including product and engineering and design. And today, Fire Nation, we'll talk about the customer life cycle, the connection of that to customer experience, the tools that businesses can use to build out your customer life cycle, Fire Nation, omni-channel, and so much more when we get back from thanking our sponsors. Have an idea for an online store, but stuck because you don't have the courage or resources to take action? That stops today. It's time to turn your e-commerce idea into reality with the Idea to Store contest. For details, visit www.idea2.store today. That's www.ideato.store. Turn your small e-commerce business into the next big thing with Klaviyo. Klaviyo is the easy-to-use email and SMS platform that gives you everything you need to build genuine relationships with your customers. Give it a try with a free account at klaviyo.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash fire. Samuel, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something that you believe about becoming successful that most people disagree with. What's up, Fire Nation? Great to be with you all, and obviously great to be with you, John. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, what I would say, and I don't know how unpopular this will be, uh, but what I would say is that unlike what most people would say, I am comfortable with both regret and jealousy as emotions. You hear a lot these days about how regret is bad and you should just kind of put that aside or how jealousy is terrible. You should just run your own race. And there's truth to all of that. Um, What I found over the years, though, is that if you can pay attention to your feelings and if you can pay attention to why there's regret or why there's jealousy and, and, of course, put that aside and use that to inform your future actions, it's a more productive way to live um, and a more informed way to live um, than to simply say, well, regrets are terrible, jealousy is terrible, uh, let's just move on. So that's maybe one thing that I can offer. In Fire Nation, that's why I love starting off with that question because it brings some really unique perspectives. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here, give you some different perspectives about how to look at life, how to think about life, how to operate within business. And as I mentioned in the introduction, Samo, I mean, he leads Square's point of sale and CRM business unit. And we'll be talking about building a customer life cycle today. But first off, Samo, I want to dive in and have you tell us a little bit about Square so Fire Nation can, can get a good gist of what Square is and does and specifically what you're trying to solve. I could talk about this for hours, but I will aim to keep it short. (laughs) Um, So Square's mission is economic empowerment. We wish to democratize access and participation in the economy for audiences that we would consider uh, traditionally or even currently underserved. Um, Many people know the story, but if you don't, we started over 10 years ago with the smallest of small businesses. Uh, the flower shop or the flower cart down the street that wasn't accepting credit cards and thereby losing business. Um, the the taxi cab driver that was stuck with a pretty poor way to actually manage transactions and accept payments. Um, and over time, we've also started to serve consumers through Cash App uh, and hopefully artists in the future through Tidal. Uh, me and my colleagues are focused on the seller business, on the seller side of the business, which serves businesses, what we call them sellers, uh, of all sizes, all categories, and increasingly more and more countries. Um, On the seller side specifically, we help businesses start, run, and grow their business through well-integrated, well-designed tools um, and a collection of what we would call APIs to boot. Um, And the purpose, again, is to help these businesses get access to tools that they might not have, um, to help them grow their business through tools that were previously unavailable, um, and to hopefully do it with uh, great design and great customer service. Well, that's one thing that we're going to be focusing on for the rest of the interview today is the word customer. Because we all do hear this phrase, 
customer life cycle. But to be honest with you, most people don't have a clue of what that actually means. What the heck yep. is a customer life cycle? Break it down for us. It's one of those things that's tossed around, but um, somewhat poorly understood. So, so we can break it down and simplify it. Um, customer life cycle is the different stages that a consumer or a purchaser or even a prospective purchaser of your business, whether you're selling goods, services, something in between, um, goes through uh, from being aware that they have a need um, for your product or service to being a loyal customer and a brand advocate. And so it's effectively this question of how do we get purchasers and prospective purchasers from point A to point B, um, point A being awareness and point B, which is the final destination, essentially being a brand advocate or a loyal customer. Um, we usually break it down into five stages and different folks will use four or six stages, but, but let me tell you the five stages that we think about. So the first stage of the customer life cycle is awareness, right? Um, you can't buy something that you don't necessarily need, or you might not even be aware that you need it. So the awareness stage is essentially making a prospective customer aware of you, your brand, your offerings, what you stand for, what you value, and what you offer. Um, and if they have that need, they should be aware of it. Um, and if they if they don't necessarily have that need, but might have that need, they should still be aware. And so, so awareness is how you achieve that with the broadest pool of prospective purchasers in your industry. Let me give you an example. So um, I live in San Francisco, and uh, you know I became a homeowner a few years ago, and stuff's always breaking down around the house. I'm sure you know this feeling. Uh, and and I go on YouTube and find amazing videos of like simple home repair things that you could do by yourself, DIY. Um, and that's how I become aware of various home repair pros in my area. And the day that something actually goes wrong that I certainly can't fix, um, I should be able to remember and say, oh boy, you know what? Those home repair pros that I saw two months ago uh, that were really helpful, I better call them uh, because I'm now I'm, I now need this thing and now I'm aware of them, right? So that's the awareness stage, super important. Uh, the next stage down from awareness is consideration. So I'm aware that I have a need. Now I have to consider my options, and that is the consideration stage. And of course, it varies by the type of business. Think about a coffee shop, right? I, I move into a new neighborhood. I'm walking around the first morning. I'm going through a consideration stage to figure out where I'm going to get my morning coffee, but it's going to be pretty quick, right? I'm going to look at a place. I'm going to consider it. If it looks good, I'm just going to jump in and buy me a coffee and be on my way. Home repair, of course, completely different. Uh, if I'm going to do a $5,000 flooring job, which unfortunately I'm personally going to be needing to do soon here, um, I'm going to go through and take my time, right? I'm going to sit down with my computer at my desktop for an hour, and I'm going to pull up all the review sites and I'm going to do my Google research and I'm going to look on YouTube and I'm going to be calling businesses to see if I can get a hold of them. I'm going to be looking at their websites. And so that's a consideration phase where you're saying, okay, I have this awareness. I have this need. Now I got to consider my options and pick the best one for me. So that's consideration. Next one down from that conversion, obviously super important, right? How do I actually convert? How do I actually conduct a transaction, uh, the actual act of commerce with the business owner. Uh, once again, you know, picking the two disparate examples, coffee shop, super simple. I go in there, use uh, pay, pay at my point of sale, hopefully it's a square point of sale, I might add, um, and, and, and be on my way. But of course, if it's home and repair, um, it's going to involve something completely different. I might get an estimate and then I might pay an invoice. And so that's the conversion step of actually doing the first transaction with the business owner and with the business. Um, and then, and this is the part where most people could use more time and attention, the next step down is retention. It is hard to get the first transaction from a prospective purchaser, but it is just as hard. Uh, and a lot more beneficial if you can actually retain the customer, right? Get the customer to do transaction number two, three, four. Um, and once again, that's going to vary by stage. If it's a bakery, well, you might visit a bakery and be a retained consumer, one that goes back over and over again, four, five, six times a month. Um, 
But if you are a gutter cleaner, right? So again, to pick a completely different example, uh, a retained customer looks like somebody who comes back once or twice a year. So retention is also going to vary by business category and the needs of the purchaser. Uh, but that's the next step. And the final step, difficult to achieve with most consumers, but the best brands and the best businesses do it successfully, is loyalty or advocacy. This is the most coveted stage because you could be retained and still not loyal. Um, I won't name names here, but my internet provider, I'm retained. I pay my bill every month, but you could bet your bottom dollar I'm not an advocate. <laughs> um, and most people that you know are not advocates for their internet service providers for all the reasons that we're familiar with. Um, and so how does a brand or a business owner design their life cycle in a way or design their customer experience in a way that produces advocates, that produces loyal customers? And this is something that more businesses would do well to pay attention to and one that certainly we continue to focus attention on Square when we serve our own customers. So that's how I would set up the five stages of the customer life cycle. Uh, and of course, in today's day and age, the customer life cycle continues to get yet more complex um, because of the way we live, right? I mean, think about the acceleration that we've gone through with COVID over the last 18 months. Um, and now everything's online, everything's contactless, everything's online plus offline. And so how do we design the customer life cycle in response to the world around us is an ongoing challenge. So Fire Nation, I want to run through this real quick because it's a critical process, this customer life cycle. One is awareness, then you move into consideration, then that actual conversion, then the retention, and then this is something I think a lot of people don't think about very deeply is the loyalty, becoming an advocate, like actually being an evangelist, like talking about it, being like so excited. How do you think the Netflix movies that we all watch get around? Because we all advocate for them. We love certain shows and then we talk about them, we advocate for them. And then of course, if your friend's talking highly about something and you respect and trust that friend, I mean, that's going to be something you're going to go off and say, hey, heard about a great show today. Let's make it happen. So let's talk about the tools that businesses can actually use in this building out of the customer life cycle another great point, right? It, we are fortunate um, as business owners, and we're fortunate at Square, certainly, to have the most concentrated set of tools available to us in today's day and age to design an exceptional customer life cycle that helps the brand stand out, that helps the brand be omni-channel friendly, that helps the business attract and retain uh, consumers that will become advocates with the help of good tools, uh, unlike ever before uh, in business history. So let's talk about that. Um, I'm going to tell you tools, but I'm going to break them down again with the five stages to make it simple. So let's start with awareness. Um, there's a series of tools available for awareness, and I'll cherry pick a couple of examples. YouTube is a fantastic source, right? Blogs are a fantastic source of creating awareness. Consumers and prospective purchasers, when they become aware, what is the first thing they do today? They actually go online on their phone um, and they basically try to understand uh, what it is that they could be doing in a completely different context. As I said, like there could be a DIY um, kind of YouTube video for a home repair business, uh, and that content is being put out into the world not to immediately attract the consumer, but to create awareness for the business and to build a brand that exists to serve the consumer, even if the transaction isn't happening for months or years down the road. So for awareness, we would recommend YouTube blogs. Instagram, and certainly the plethora of ad formats that are available on social media and on Google and elsewhere. So awareness is just about ensuring that you have great content and great advertising. The next stage is consideration. Um, and in consideration, we would advocate that your website really should be the number one option. Um, put yourself in the shoes of a consumer. If they're evaluating amongst three, four, or five different vendors, uh, they're going to pay attention to the level of completeness of your website, to the level of professionalism and care that the brand has in making sure that the consideration step is painless for the consumer. Um, 
So that is the number one tool we would recommend because in today's day and age, consumers certainly look at websites uh, and ensure that information is clear, that the process for the way goods and services are delivered is clear, that if it's a self-checkout, that is super seamless, that everything works super successfully on mobile devices. And so for consideration, the number one tool we would recommend is ensuring that the website is A+. Plus. Um, and then beyond that, we would also recommend messaging tools. So depending upon the type of business, the consumer may want to message the business directly and hear back from them before they make a purchase decision. Uh, this is why Square has invested heavily in products like Square Messages, which allow businesses and prospective consumers or existing consumers to communicate with each other before the consumer makes a purchasing decision. Uh, and finally, we would also advocate for reviews. Reputation, online reputation specifically on various review sites is the coin of the realm in 2021. And so anything that businesses can do to ensure that they have fantastic online reputation is going to be a critical part of the consideration step. So website, reputation management, messaging. Those are the three things we would advocate for in consideration. Then there's the conversion step. Um, and again, we live in an omni-channel world. Consumers expect to be able to buy online. They expect to be able to buy offline, and they expect all of this to work seamlessly. If your business is an offline business, or at least has an offline presence in the form of a store uh, or even a field operation, uh, we would, of course, recommend that a point-of-sale product um, is absolutely must-have in today's day and age. Uh, and if you're going to pick a point of sale, um, you should pick something that is mobile first, cloud first, um, and omnichannel friendly. Um, and of course, we can recommend one to you, uh, but but there are several options available. Um, and, and Square Point of Sale, uh, I'm certainly biased, but is, is, is one of the best ones out there. Um, and additionally, an online store with e-commerce capability uh, is also critical for conversion. In today's day and age, consumer may prefer to buy online, pick up in store. They may prefer to buy offline and or buy online and return in store. Um, they may want to buy offline and print a shipping label to return from their homes. And so a wonderful e-commerce presence alongside a point of sale for offline businesses, and ideally both of these things working together, will be critical for the conversion step um, and certainly also why we continue to invest heavily in Square Online, which is our online store offering. Um, then we come to retention, uh, two types of tools that are super valuable. Uh, the first is customer relationship management software, more colloquially known as CRM. Once you have this base of customers, we need to be able to recognize who they are, we need to be able to understand what they've purchased from us, how often they visit, uh, did they have a good experience last time, how can we make their experience better, and all of this data is usually managed and analyzed and stored and recorded in CRM software. Once again, lots of different options online, lots of options by category of business even, um, and certainly Square paired with its point of sale and Square Online offerings also offers an integrated CRM system that manages all of your customer data online and offline synced together all at once. Um, we would also recommend marketing software. Um, certainly email marketing and text message marketing are both popular options today. Um, and, and marketing and retention software, what it allows you to do is take the consumer data that's now in your CRM, which hopefully you have, um, and allows you to ensure that you message these consumers thoughtfully. Um, if you have a new promotion, if you have a new discount, if you have new store hours, if you have new staff, all of these things are things that the consumer would benefit from and keeps your brand top of mind from a retention perspective. Um, and so we would recommend marketing software and CRM software for retention. Um, and finally, for advocacy, we would recommend a loyalty program, whether your business is primarily in store or primarily online or increasingly both. Um, a loyalty program is a fantastic proven successful way to ensure that consumers have a reason to keep coming back to ensure that consumers feel special for transacting with you versus 
somebody else down the street uh, or somebody else that's two clicks away. Um, and, and of course, as we all know, um, there's a reason we're all obsessed with our points because these points programs, these loyalty programs certainly work. Um, and the final thing I would say uh, is gift cards. Gift cards are once again a powerful mechanism to bind, build brand advocacy and loyalty because once you get to the point that you've purchased a gift card to give to your friend, you are effectively doing advocacy on behalf of the brand to your friends and family, which is also amazing. So awareness, which is YouTube, blogs, Instagram ads, consideration, which is website, messaging, reputation, conversion, which is point of sale and e-commerce online store, retention with marketing software and CRM software, and advocacy with loyalty programs and gift card programs. Wow, Fire Nation, this is one of those episodes where you're just like, I need to go back with a team of note takers and just take notes vociferously because there is so much knowledge, so much value being shared here, so many takeaways and things to implement and insert into your business literally today. We're going to be talking about some really important things when we get back from thanking our sponsors. Do you have an idea for an online store but are stuck because you don't have the courage or resources to take action? Well, that stops today. It's time to turn your e-commerce idea into reality with the Idea to Store contest. The contest is organized by dot .store domains, the domain extension for business owners, stores, and anyone who is selling something online. More than 450,000 sellers currently trust dot .store domains for their online store. The Idea to Store contest is live right now, and we want you to have a chance to win up to $30,000 in cash prizes to help start your own online store. In addition to the cash prizes up for grabs, you can also win a chance to be mentored by me, JLD, on your journey to finally launching your online store idea. For details on how to sign up, submitting your online store idea via Instagram, and more, visit www.idea2.store today. That's www.ideato.store store. Getting an online business off the ground isn't easy. There are a lot of moving pieces when it comes to building an e-commerce brand. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember, great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. Klaviyo is the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up a free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful, branded messages and minutes thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance and with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights you can keep growing your business as you go get started with a free account at clavio.com slash fire fire nation is time to build genuine relationships with your customers at clavio.com slash fire that's k-l-a-v-i-y-o dot com slash fire so i'm we're back and we all hear this word omni-channel. What role does omni-channel play in actually building this customer lifecycle we've been talking about? Another one of these buzzwords that happens to be super important. So let me first start by defining omni-channel, John. So um, omni-channel is effectively the process by which businesses meet consumers where the consumers are or choose to be, right? Simple concept. Um, today, consumers live online, offline, and everywhere in between at all hours of the day. The kind of logical separation that we had between our quote-unquote online life and offline life, that's gone, right? That was a thing 10 years ago, 20 years ago. That's gone. We're glued to our phones. We're walking around with them. Um, and we're buying online, picking up in store. And so Omnichannel effectively says, how am I going to design my customer life cycle and my customer experience in a way that reflects the way my consumers and actually all humans these days live? Um, and if they want to purchase online, great, we can offer that. If they want to book appointments by calling me on the phone, we could do that. But if they want to do that online, we could do that too. Um, if they want to check my hours of operation at 11 p.m. at night while they're checking out their favorite Netflix show uh, instead of waiting to call me at 9 a.m. the next morning, we can do that too for them. 
So omnichannel, in summary, if you step back, represents a reversion of control from the seller to the buyer, right? 20 years ago, you'd be calling around five different places and asking them, how late are you open today? In today's day and age, if that information isn't available on their website, you're not getting that customer, right? So in this way and many other ways, Omnichannel represents a reversion to the buyer and as a result, asks sellers to design their a customer lifecycle um, in a way that is omnichannel friendly. So what does that mean? We talked about the five stages, right? Awareness, consideration, conversion, retention, advocacy. You can design a thoughtful customer lifecycle for your bakery, let's say, right? And what that could look like 20 years ago is I have a great sign, I have great signage, I have a well-lit store, uh, I'm in a great location. Um, when the customer comes in, I'm going to make sure that the person who serves them or takes their order is a friendly person. Um, and by the way, I'm going to give them a punch card on the way out the door and ask them to come back for 10 punches. That's a customer lifecycle um, and a good customer experience 20 years ago. In today's day and age, that's great, but it doesn't quite work because the consumer lives differently. So the question in front of us is, how do we design a customer life cycle that is thoughtful and authentic and careful, but friendly to the omni-channel environment that we live in, which of course has been accelerated over the last 18 months uh, through the crazy COVID world that we've all been living through? What does that mean? Well, what that means is that each stage we have to break down how the consumer is living and then design and redesign and tweak our customer life cycle in reflection of that. So for example, if we're talking about awareness for that bakery, certainly they should be having great signage and a well-lit store, but they should also consider if they need to be posting on Instagram about how they bake their baked goods uh, to generate awareness amongst local consumers who live down the street, but also check Instagram four times a day. Uh, when it comes to consideration, uh, this bakery uh, may want to ensure that they can offer a wonderful website that explains all the different baked goods and the way they're built and um, what sorts of goods are available when um, and, and, and so on. And what is the story behind a particular cake um, and, and that, that nature that allows the consumer uh, to consider this bakery more strongly, but is also available online in addition to offline. When it comes to conversion, certainly the bakery should have a great mobile-friendly point of sale, but also could offer buy online, pick up in store. How convenient would it be if the consumer can just pull out their phone, browse on their online store, pick the cake they want for their birthday or their friend's birthday tomorrow, and go pick it up at 9 a.m. the next morning? No actual need to go to the shop and wait there for half an hour while they make a custom cake for you. All of this can be done online and then you go pick it up in the store. That's a wonderful customer life cycle at the conversion step. And certainly for retention and advocacy, you could do the same. So the purpose of Omnichannel is to ensure that across channels and devices, we design a life cycle that reflects the way consumers live and helps the consumer have a wonderful experience at every step of the every step of the customer life cycle um, in a way that we live today. Wow. I mean, Fire Nation, omni-channel for all the obvious reasons. And one thing you may not know, Samal, is that Fire Nation is kind of on the beginning side of things as far as getting their customer lifecycle going and getting their business rolling and getting to like that point where they have real traction, real momentum. I mean, of course, it's across the board, but a lot of people are really still in that kind of building momentum and traction phase. So to end here strong, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs, for our listeners here today who are just getting started? It's important to reflect on the fact that as a business owner, this journey continues for the lifetime of the business and the life cycle and the customer experience evolves as the business evolves. However, it is never too early to design a thoughtful life cycle, even at the earliest stages of the business. What I would say is the following. 
there's no one size fits all model. As we have already explored through this conversation, a gutter cleaner is going to look very different from a bakery, which is going to look quite different from a fine dining white tablecloth restaurant. And so the first thing that the business owner can do, whether they're early in their journey or much later in their journey, is to ensure that they map out how their consumers go through the five stages. And that is going to vary by business category. That is going to vary by consumer demographics. That's going to vary by location, country, you name it. But the first step is to thoughtfully map out how does my prospective purchaser or actual purchaser go through the five stages and then to overlay a simple, if needed, but ideally omni-channel friendly customer lifecycle um, that 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 actually reflects the way the consumers live and converse and engage in commerce. Now, um, it is important at the earliest stages of the business to prioritize because obviously um, a sole proprietor that, of course, is burning the midnight oil in both directions, may even be starting out as a side hustle, may not be able to do everything all at once on day one. That is certainly fair and understandable. Um, and so what we would recommend are three simple tools that would help these business owners at the earliest stages, um, even if they're just starting out. One, I cannot say it enough, have a great website that truly explains to the consumer who you are, what you stand for, why you exist, what services you offer, how to get in touch with you easily, effectively on mobile phones, um, and how quickly you can respond. So a website is absolutely paramount in today's day and age. Um, the other thing we would recommend for businesses that are transacting face-to-face, -face, even if it's six feet distant. If you are transacting face-to-face, -face, you need a mobile-friendly, cloud-friendly, omni-channel friendly point-of-sale system. Certainly, we're biased. We can recommend one for you, um, but, but there are many options available for your business, no matter what business category you are in, no matter what niche subcategory of the business you're in, there's a great point-of-sale out there for you. Um, and, and then the final thing we would recommend is customer relationship management software, because in the end, no matter how small or large a business you are, you need to be able to know and understand and engage your customers, prospective, current, um, advocates and everybody in between. And that can only happen if you understand who they are in depth and have the right data and the right attributes available at your fingertips. And software can help you with that. So, Sam, well, you've dropped a lot of value over the course of the past 30 minutes. I think you really ended with a bang here, but I just want to make sure that Fire Nation knows the number one takeaway that you have for our audience to make sure of everything that you shared this is the one thing that they're definitely going to remember, hopefully implement in a short period of time. So give us that one key takeaway. Give us any way that you want Fire Nation to connect with you and or Square on a, on a next level. And then we'll say goodbye. Thank you for this opportunity. If there's one takeaway I can offer, it is this. The world has changed on us in the last 18 months in ways that are irreversible and in ways that we don't yet fully understand. However, no matter what world we live in, um, it is clear that a well-designed, omni-channel friendly customer life cycle will continue to be paramount to your business and it is not too early to get started today and to map out how to make one and how to design one that produces great customer experiences and great brand advocates. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with me, I'm on Twitter at at Sommel, S-A-U-M-I-L, and I look forward to hearing from Fire Nation. Oh, you'll be hearing from them, Sommel, because they're probably going to have a couple questions and a lot of thanks for all the awesome value that you dropped here today. Because Fire Nation is aware that they're the average of the five people they spend the most time with. And you've been hanging out with SM and JLD today. So keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. Type SAUML, S-A-U-M-I-L, in the search bar. The show notes page from today will pop up with everything we've talked about. Links to all that jazz. And SAUML, thank you for sharing your truth, your knowledge, your value with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. 
Thank you. Thank you, John. Great to be with you today. Hey, Fire Nation. Today's value bomb content was brought to you by Samal and Fire Nation. The idea to store contest by dot store domains is live. You have the chance to win cash prizes up to $30,000 for sharing your online store ideas. Learn more at www.idea2.store. That's www.ideato.store and I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Have an idea for an online store but stuck because you don't have the courage or resources to take action? That stops today. It's time to turn your e-commerce idea into reality with the Idea to Store contest. For details, visit www.idea2.store today. That's www.ideato.store. Turn your small e-commerce business into the next big thing with Klaviyo. Klaviyo is the easy to use email and SMS platform that gives you everything you need to build genuine relationships with your customers. Give it a try with a free account at klaviyo.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O.com slash fire.